Hi everyone, and welcome to my Inktober sketchbook tour for 2023. This is my eighth year in a row taking part in Inktober, and this is my eighth Inktober sketchbook that I've completed. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, as some of you know, I took quite a long break, so it felt great to get back into that process of working on these drawings every day, working in this style that I love so much. So before I show you the drawings, I'll talk about the supplies I used to create them. So for the inking, I used Sakura Pigma Micron pens. For all the shading and the colouring, I used Copic Chow markers. And for the highlights, I started off with a white Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil. And then for the brighter highlights, I used white Sakura Jelly Roll pens. Oh, and this is a, a De La Rowney Earthbound sketchbook. I love the mid-tone background on this paper. I had so much fun over those 31 days working in the sketchbook. I, I approached it with more preparation, and I guess I approached it in a more healthy way, so I got a lot more out of it, and I feel like I was able to appreciate it more. And I've been really looking forward to sharing these drawings with you in this video, so here we go! Actually, before we even start the tour, I worked on this drawing on the front cover. And in previous years, I've loved the idea of the front cover giving a hint at what's going on inside the sketchbook. This time, I decided to be even more literal with that, where you can see there's a portal. And through that portal, you can see a glimpse at the first drawing on the first page of the sketchbook. So you can see the Red Caped Adventurer has been heading up these steps. These stones have been leading their way up this path. There's a very snowy, cold environment surrounding the portal. But through the portal is a very different environment. You can see these spiralling clouds. And so through the portal, on day one, the word prompt was dream. So I worked on this one, with this very dreamy landscape, these spiralling clouds. There's water on the ground with the ripples. Um, I, I really enjoyed adding the layers of shading with the clouds, starting with the light shades outwards towards the darker shades in the foreground, creating more depth, and the moon shining down and highlighting everything. This was just a really fun one to start Inktober, and I just love the idea of it. Uh, you, could, you could see this drawing through the front cover. On day two, the word prompt was spiders, and I was a bit cautious about this one because I know a lot of people are scared of spiders, <laughs> but I worked on this massive one at the centre. Um, you can see the red caped adventurer is heading through this cave. You can see the moon in the background that's highlighting this cave from the background, and so I really enjoyed adding the layers of shading from that light shading in the background to the dark shading in the foreground. Uh, I also really enjoyed adding the spider's webs with the, the white pencil and the white ink pens. Um, you can see a couple of extra spiders around here as well. Um, but yeah, the moon is highlighting this massive spider at the centre. Then on to day three, and the word was path. And this one, I, I knew immediately what I wanted to work on as soon as I saw the word. And um, I just love working on environment scenes like this. This is like the kind of theme that I love working on. Um, I love this, um, I, I use a pea green marker, which creates this lovely green on this mid-tone background. Uh, so you can see for the word path, I added um, th these steps coming out of the water. The Red Caped Adventurer is heading off on their adventure. You've got a waterfall, um, you've got the moon shining down and highlighting everything. Just a very peaceful scene that I just I knew I wanted to work on and I'm really happy with. Then on to day four, and the word prompt was dodge. So for this one, I really struggled. I, it took me ages to think of an idea for this one. And in the end, I decided on this volcano that's erupting and throwing out these massive boulders that the character managed to dodge in the foreground. Um, I, I loved adding the layers of lava that flow over the cliffside, uh, adding those orange clouds that are glowing from the lava, uh, the moon shining in the background and highlighting the cloud of ash, and these burnt and scorched trees in the foreground. Uh, this was a really fun one. After not knowing what to work on, I'm really happy with the result. <laughs> then on to day five, and the word was map. And this one, I um, it's kind of similar to a map drawing that I worked on a couple of years ago, but that one was much more zoomed in, and it was like focused on the compass. This time, much more zoomed out, and we're looking at as if we're inside a pirate ship and the map is on the table, they're looking at the treasure map, they can see the, the X marks the spot, they've got the compass out and they have their feather quill. And you can see through the window the moon is shining down and highlighting what looks to be the environment that's on the map. So you can see they've found their location and they're about they you know they're going to head out and find that treasure. 
Golden was the word prompt on day six. And so I worked on this massive golden tree. Uh, I will admit I've been very inspired by Elden Ring. <laughs> I think I spent a lot of time playing Elden Ring this year, and so I think a lot of my drawings are probably some way inspired by Elden Ring right now. Um, you see the red caped adventurer is heading towards this massive tree. You've got a crescent moon in the background that's highlighting everything, a forest in the background, and this massive golden canopy of leaves. You can see some of the golden leaves are falling down, they're glowing, and you can see some of the ones in the foreground are highlighting the rocks. Um, I also really loved adding the reflection in the water. That, that was a fun challenge. On to day seven, and the word prompt was drip. So I worked on this drawing of the moon, and it's highlights dripping down into the water and flowing down through the waterfalls. Uh, I really enjoyed adding the, the details to the moon and uh, just playing with the highlights, and also adding the shadows from the, the light shading in the background to the dark shading in the foreground. This was a, a really fun and experimental drawing that ended up being, I, I think, one of the more effective drawings of the month. Day 8 has the word prompt toad, and I was really excited to try this idea. I, I immediately knew what I wanted to try, and it's a massive toad sitting in the water with the red coat adventurer visiting them in the boat. Uh, whether they're a friend or a foe, um, I like to imagine that this toad is wise and is going to help the character on their way. Um, I think one of my favourite parts of this drawing was adding the moon and the highlights and showing how massive the toad is by the way they block the moonlight on that right side of the image. Um, this was a fun challenge and uh, I, just, I just love this character of the toad. <laughs> Next up on day 9 the word prompt was bounce and so I worked on this one. It's kind of like a video game, like a platformer, with the red caped adventurer bouncing across these mushrooms and toadstools. And they're just, yeah, they're just bouncing along on their adventure. You've got some massive mushrooms and toadstools in the distance to give a sense of scale. You've got the moon shining through. Uh, the layers are separated by these layers of cloud. Um, I really enjoyed trying this idea. Um, lots of details. <laughs> then on to day 10, and the word prompt was fortune. And so you can see a shipwreck in the background. They've been in search for this treasure chest that's here in the foreground, filled with gold and gemstones. We added some nice detailed seaweed here and some gold coins down here. Um, I really enjoy these kind of drawings. You, you can probably tell uh, through a lot of my sketchbooks in the past as well. I, I, I love drawings where I can try and tell a bit of a story. And in this one, it was a great opportunity to show that this shipwreck um, has happened in search for this treasure chest and they've had their own misfortune. Next on the daily prompts, on day 11, the word prompt was wonder. And so I worked on this scene. You can see the red-caped adventurer looks tiny on this bridge. I think these bridges are clearly used for transporting goods across this landscape. Uh, I really tried to make the red-caped adventurer look tiny to give a sense of scale to this massive open landscape that they're travelling across. You can see there's trees dotted on the landscape and the shading gets darker as you get closer to the foreground. Um, this was a fun challenge to try and um, use the light shading fa and getting darker as, as the layers get progressively closer. It was a, a tough challenge to try and balance that so I didn't lose some of the details. Um, but I, I'm really pleased with the results, especially on this bridge here. Then moving on to day 12 and the word prompt was spicy. And I struggled so much with this word. I, I really wasn't sure what to work on, but in the end I decided to try this idea with a very cold, snowy environment. A, a, a narrow alleyway between these buildings, covered in snow, and there's a market stall with some nice spicy, warm food to warm you up. Um, and you can see a cat sitting on this roof, and there's some lanterns. Um, every Inktober, I make sure to add at least one cat into my drawings. It's uh, a tribute to my two cats, Smudge and Charlie, who um, have now sadly passed away. Um, they were always around me while I was working on the Inktober drawings in the past, and so I I just love to include at least one cat in one of my drawings each year. Then on day 13, the word was rise, and I worked on this dragon. As some of you know, I love drawing dragons, and I think I probably include them in every Inktober I've done. <laughs> Uh, this one was quite complicated in the end because I wanted to have a nice cold, dark sky with the stars and the moon shining down. 
But I also wanted to separate all the layers with clouds, but I, di I didn't want the clouds to look too flat. So I had to add shading to the clouds uh, as they got closer to the foreground. I think I balanced it quite well, um, the way it kind of separates the foreground layers. You see the red-caped adventurer heading towards them. And the, the sense of scale between this tiny looking red-caped adventurer and this massive dragon on the horizon. On to day 14, and the word prompt was castle. And I loved working on this one. I, I, I've been having so much fun working on environment drawings recently. That's something I've really tried to practice. And I especially love working on snowy landscapes where you can see the blanket of snow has covered everything, including the castle. The moon shining down, highlighting everything. They've got their fireplace working with the smoke coming up the chimney. Uh, this was a really fun scene to create. Then on to day 15 and the word prompt was dagger. And this one I really enjoyed, uh, trying this idea, uh, the juxtaposition between a really sharp, dangerous, uh, quite ornate looking dagger that's been stuck into this tree, surrounded by delicate cherry blossoms. I was just really interested in exploring that idea of uh, something so dangerous being surrounded by nature. And what could be the story? Why has this dagger been stuck into this tree like this? And I also added the moon again just to highlight everything and make it all stand out a bit more. On day 16, the word prompt was angel, and I really struggled with this one, trying to think of something that would fit with the theme and the world that I love to draw with the red-caped adventurer. And in the end, I decided on this angel statue that looks quite ominous in this scene, in this graveyard with the silver birch trees in the background as well, uh, the moon shining down, highlighting everything, but these wings kind of surrounding the scene. I just love the idea of this being kind of like a situation where it's like a, a it's just before the boss fight. <laughs> and then on day 17, the word prompt was demon. And we have another boss fight. <laughs> the red caped adventurer is holding up this staff. They're about to fight this demon skull that's flying down from the stars. Got a blood moon in the background. And the, the challenge that I loved about this drawing was that I made the staff itself the light source. So you can see the highlights shining off from the staff and creating shadows. Um, and I also love the challenge of adding the different layers of shading. That was, It was really fun. This one was uh, quite difficult to put together, but I'm really proud of the result. Then on to day 18, and the word prompt was saddle. And I was thinking again about the theme and the world that this red-caped adventurer lives in. and. I didn't want to just go for a saddle on a horse, uh, I was also thinking maybe a saddle on a dragon, but I was thinking about like the practicality of the Red Caped Adventurer trying to get through a forest, and a boar seemed like a really cool idea to have a saddle on the boar, it's also carrying the character's sword. Um, and then I just added some autumn, like some autumn details just around the scene, with some leaves flying down, landing in the water, had these ferns by the water as well. Uh, I'm really pleased with this one. I, I struggled initially trying to think about what kind of creature to put the saddle on, but um, having this nice crimson saddle on this boar's back is, is quite a fun theme. Then on to day 19, and the word prompt was plump. And I, uh, I decided to work on this very plump looking seal on this iceberg. <laughs> so you can see the, the moon shining down, highlighting everything, and... Um, this enormous seal is just having a, a good day. Just seems very happy, very peaceful, a nice relaxing scene where he's just uh, just chilling out. Next up on day 20, the word prompt was frost. And so I worked on this extremely cold, snowy winter scene with the ship stuck in the ice. Got a mountain peak with the moon shining behind it, highlighting everything. Uh, these blocks of ice, taking inspiration from the iceberg from the previous drawing. I love that cool blue glow from the ice. Um, and just blankets of snow covering everything, including this tree. Uh, the flag flying on the ship, the, the same crimson colouring that I love to add. And some birds flying in the distance. Just a really cold winter scene. Then on to day 21, and the word prompt was chains. And I loved the idea of this one. This, this one was so fun because I, I just, I knew I wanted to try it. It was quite a challenge, but I, I'm glad I gave it a go. 
this house and this block of land is just floating and it, it would float away if not for these chains that have been put in place. Uh, I like to imagine it is uh, an eccentric witch or wizard and they've been playing around with magic a bit too much and now their house is trying to fly away. <laughs> you can see them in the window there. Um, and the Red Caped Adventurer is just off on their journey walking underneath this block of land that's just <laughs> trying to float away. Uh, then on to day 22, and the word prompt was Scratchy. And I really struggled with this one. I, I, I wasn't sure what to work on for Scratchy. But in the end, I decided on this. The Red Caped Adventurer is walking across this landscape. There's lots of massive bones. You can see uh, even in the horizon, there's just uh, huge silhouettes of these massive rib cages. And at the center, you have this hand that's just stuck out of the landscape. Uh, but you can see blood on all of the fingers and the thumb. Um, obviously, it's a trap. You can see where adventurers have left their weapons and you can see uh, bones in the, in the ground as well. Um, it's obviously something at the center is luring adventurers in and this hand is just crunching them. Uh, quite a spooky drawing for uh, this prompt. <laughs> Then on to day 23, and the word prompt was celestial. And this one was a really fun experiment because I decided to go off theme for this one, out of the, the world that I, uh, I love to work on and just trying something totally experimental, working on uh, celestial space scene, lots of planets. Uh, in the sky. Um, you can see this uh, spaceman with their flag. Uh, they've got all of their equipment keeping them alive on the surface of whatever planet this is. And you can see a spiral galaxy in the distance as well. And the layers of everything just being separated by these clouds just banding across. And so on day 24 the word prompt was shallow. And I worked on this. In previous Inktobers I've worked on A Sword in the Stone. Uh, this one I tried to add a bit more of a story to it, so you can see that this is clearly a trap. <laughs> Anyone who wades through these water lilies towards this sword, um, they might not notice that there's a skull underneath the water, the very shallow water. Um, and something is clearly protecting this sword from being taken. I, I loved working on this because it was I, I think it's quite effective to add brightly highlighted water lilies in front of that dark background. Um, I'm glad I added that dark background. I initially was going to have it just um, the, the mid-tone background of the paper, but once I added that black and then added the stars, I was, I was so much happier with this drawing and I think it worked out for the best. And then dangerous was the word prompt on day 25, so I worked on this. I really wasn't sure what to work on, it took me a long time to decide, um, and in the end I opted for this scenario where the Red Caped Adventurer is walking over this bridge, it's a nice nature path that's heading over this river of lava, um, and they're heading towards an even more dangerous scenario where the bridge ahead has been destroyed, so I don't know what they're going to do next. And then day 26 the word was remove. So I worked on this. I was inspired by Elden Ring, <laughs> um, especially for this, this sapling design. Um, there's some saplings in that game that um, I was really inspired by, the way they're ghostly and glowing. Um, and in this case, you can see this tree has been chopped down, um, but it's growing again. It's not giving up. Its roots are feeding from the water down here. There's some leaves and some fungi. Uh, but I was really, I, I really wanted to try this, where there's this almost like ghostly sapling growing up through the center, um, and it stands out in front of that dark night sky with the stars shining and some silhouettes of some trees in the background as well. Um, I'm really pleased with this one, uh, but yeah, inspired by Elden Ring again. <laughs> then on to day 27, and the word prompt was beast. And you can see this tower is being attacked by this enormous snake. And the red caped adventurer is here with a spear to try and save whoever's inside. Um, and the, the moon is highlighting everything. The, the scales on the, the snake took a long time to draw. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this one, 
I'm I'm really proud of because I actually initially I struggled to think of an idea, but uh, I was thinking maybe a dragon. But then I've already drawn a dragon so far this month, and I, I thought. I had so much fun drawing a snake like this a couple of years ago. I wanted to try a more dynamic version where it's actually, it's actually attacking something. And in this case, it's large enough to attack a building. <laughs> and then on to day 28, and the word prompt was sparkle. So I worked on this. Some magical crystals in this very cold, snowy environment. And these crystals are giving off some kind of magical, warm energy. So the snow around them has melted. You can see the puddles here and the plants around them are able to grow. The moon is shining down and highlighting everything and making it sparkle. But also the light from the moon is refracting through the crystal, so the colour is showing on the snow right here. Next, on day 29, the word prompt was massive. So I worked on these massive jellyfish. You can see the red-caped adventurer has swam down from their boat. I really struggled with the idea for this one, but in the end I asked my friend Al for advice um, and I showed him all my other drawings and he decided that a good challenge for me would be an underwater scene. Uh, he hadn't seen me draw anything underwater for a while and having the challenge of refracting the light from the water's surface. Um, and yep, that, <laughs> that was a tough challenge. This drawing was probably one of the more difficult ones of the month, but it's one that I ended up feeling so proud of because I, I, I really challenged myself to create the ripples on the water surface, you can see there, and the light from the moon or the sun that's being refracted through, highlighting the jellyfish and the character, but also like shining all the way down. Um, I, 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 really, I really enjoyed the challenge of this one. So on to day 30, and the word prompt was rush. And with the next day being Halloween, and I hadn't drawn any pumpkins yet, it was time for a pumpkin drawing, and <laughs> this one, you can see there's rolling hills, pumpkin fields everywhere, and this pumpkin has picked up a lot of speed rolling down this hill, and it's off on its own adventure. <laughs> so here we are, at day 31, the last day of Inktober, the word prompt was fire. So I worked on this. You can see this house has been absolutely destroyed by fire. And up in the clouds, you can see the silhouette of the culprit, a dragon flying through on a destructive path. This one I'm really proud of because it was such a tough challenge. I, I, I wanted to see if I could create the effect of the fire glowing in a very cold, gloomy environment. You can see it's very grey around the outside, and I faded that inwards to try and create that glowing effect around the house. And it was also really fun to add the fire with the white pencil and the white ink pen and the reflection of the fire in the puddles in the foreground and the layers of snow that's melted around here as well. Uh, this was an awesome challenge and I'm so glad it was the final drawing of the month because it was um, something that I ended up feeling really proud of. And that's it! That's my Inktober sketchbook for 2023. This Inktober was really fun. I challenged myself with ideas that I hadn't tried before and I learned some new techniques along the way. As some of you know, I'd taken quite a long break, so it was nice to get back into that type of work. One of my goals was to prove to myself that I, I could still create a drawing every day. <laughs> and after all that time away, it was... Um, I, I, I genuinely proved to myself that I could, and it, it, it definitely helped with my confidence, and I'm so grateful for that. And another goal was to add the Red Caped Adventurer into more of the drawings this time, as you might have noticed, and I really enjoyed continuing their adventures. And I also tried to be a bit more brave with adding colour, which I think I succeeded with as well. So all in all, I think this was an awesome year for Inktober, and I feel like I learned so much from it. And it, it, it just it gave me that confidence again that I could still draw like that, and um, that's it's such a nice feeling. Inktober is such a great challenge. I, I always love checking out the hashtags every day of the month, seeing all the awesome artwork being posted by so many amazing artists. It's truly inspiring. Let me know if you also took part in the challenge, or a different version of it, and what were your art goals for the month. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed this sketchbook tour. Be sure to check out my website if you'd like to purchase any of my recent artwork. I'll be posting drawings and paintings on there. And also check out my print shop if you're interested in getting a print of my work. I have a lot of drawings from my sketchbooks on there. And also feel free to follow me on socials to keep updated with what I'm working on. Thank you so much again, your support means a huge amount to me. I hope you have a lovely day, and I'll see you all soon!